All right, well today we are now going to go over the second lesson for CSC 103. And today's lesson is actually broken up into two videos. The first video is going to go over how do you draw just basic shapes and things like that in processing. How can we actually use code to draw things onto the screen? And the second lesson, or the second video for today's lesson, will go over how do you add color to things and make things look all nice and pretty. And so let's go ahead and get started. And so this is what we're going to talk about today, how to run code and processing. Just how to do anything in processing, you know. How do you run code? How do you type code? What should it look like? That type of thing. Uh, more specifically, we're going to talk about how do you draw different shapes and things in processing because, you know, processing is a very visual language. It's very easy to put things on the screen and place them and, and do kind of cool things with that. And we're also going to very briefly talk about some errors that you may see in processing and what to do about them as you're coding along. And so let's start off by saying, you know, how do you run some code? And so if you open up processing on your computer, you should see a window that looks something like this. And um, we're going to break apart, you know, what each of these things do. And so I'm actually going to exit out of my slides here and pull up processing. You see, this is just a blank thing. I just opened up processing. didn't do anything special with that. And this window opened up. Now, for this course, this should say Java. If it doesn't, make sure it says Java. It should say it by default. But let's just go over a few different parts of this, um, which is called IDE for processing. And so, first off, you see we have these little buttons up here. These should look very, very familiar to you, at least some of these, maybe the file and edit. Um, we're going to go over what some of these do in more detail throughout the semester, but I just want to go ahead and say, if you go to file, you're going to see things that's very familiar to you, like uh, file, you know, save, save as, just like if it's a Word document or a PowerPoint, something like that. You can also open up other programs that you've written. You can say new, and opens up a new program. Um, so that's pretty, you know, standard, nothing too strange here. You can print out your code if you want to. Um, there's also this edit button. This edit button should also look pretty um, familiar to you if you're familiar with Word and things like that. There's, you know, undo, redo, copy, cut, paste, things like that. Um, it also has shortcuts here. It has the standard shortcuts for these types of commands. And so like Word or PowerPoint or anything like that, processing does have a file and edit toolbar just like those programs. Now it has some other things here as well. We won't go over these today. We won't be using them um, for a while, but throughout the semester we will talk about what these different tools do and how they can be helpful to you. Now, I also want to point out some other things about processing, some other different sections of this window. For one, you can see right here, um, that's where my cursor kind of is, right? That's where I can type something. This is where I will type all my code. So this is where I will write code. You know, I can write code here, here, blah, blah, blah. You know, all my code will be written kind of in this area of processing. Do you see it's giving me a lot of red lines because what I wrote is not correct code, but we'll go over that here in a little bit. Um, but this is where you would actually type your code. Um, now, but once you type it, you know, because uh, here's an example line of code, right? I can print out the words, hello world. Actually, we'll have you do this here in a bit. This is typically actually the first program anyone would write when you, uh, you learn a new language. But you see, um, if I say print line hello world, you know, what this should do is have the program and computer somewhere to shoot out the words, print out the words hello world, and I should be able to read them. But you see, I don't, I don't see that anywhere. I don't see, you know, where would that be? Um, well, first, it's going to end up being here in the, this black area of the screen, of the processing window. That's called the console. But to see it, you see, I don't see anything right now. I have to first run my program. And so I've written the code, but to see the action that it does, I actually have to run the program. The way you do that in processing is very, very simple. You see there's this play button here. And even if I hover over it, you see it says run kind of next to it. This is what you press to run your program. So if I click play, just like you're pressing play on a <laughs> VCR player or something, if I click play, you should see it runs my program and it prints out the words that I told it to print out. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's what this play button does. It runs your, your program. There's also the stop button. So if I click stop, it does what you may think. It stops the program. It still has the leftover print from before, but it, it kind of stopped the program. But you can see, in fact, go ahead. I, if you have not done so already, I encourage you to do this. Type something out like this right now. Do print LN. That stands for print line. 
and we'll talk more about this format here in a bit and throughout the semester, but just type out the words print line, print LN, parentheses, and then so in between double quotes, print out whatever you want. So you could be like, um, you know, I am awesome. Do, do, do smiley face. You can print out whatever you want, whatever kind of message you want, as long as it's between these double quotes. And as long as after print LN, you have the left-handed parentheses, and then at the end of everything, your right-hand parentheses. And then finally, you will need a semicolon. We'll talk about why here in a bit. So go ahead and give that a shot, and you should see whenever you click play, it should print out whatever you have it, you know, you told it to print out for you. You should see mine says, I am awesome, and there's a little smiley face and all that good stuff. Um, what's really kind of cool about this as well is that if you have done this, you have now officially written your first program. So you now are officially a programmer. You're good to go. Um, so all happy times from here on out. And so that's actually pretty cool. Um, this is what we call Hello World. It's the first step you always take whenever you learn a new language. Um, if this is, did not work for you, then that means maybe processing didn't install correctly. You know, if you click play and you don't see something down here, then something's going on. Um, you know, maybe you didn't install something correctly. So it's worth looking into at this point. All right, so um, that being said, let's keep on going. Um, I do want to actually now take a moment and say you should have a semicolon at the end of every command. And so, you know, I pointed out to you that you needed a semicolon here. Um, first off, let's, let's look what happens if I don't have a semicolon. First off, it puts a little red mark here, and then I get like a, this red message that says, hey, you're missing a semicolon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What this is right here, this is an error message. And so as you start learning how to code, both in processing or if you learn another language, you'll find that a lot of your time is spent trying to figure out what errors mean and how to fix those errors. That's just part of programming. It happens all the time. Even to professional programmers, they spend a lot of their time trying to figure out how to, to figure out these errors. But processing is actually pretty good about telling you what the error is and about where they think the error is. And so right here it says, hey, I think you're missing a semicolon. And just to show you that this is a problem, if I press play without this semicolon, I press play, you see nothing ran. In fact, I just get this big error message that says, you know, unexpected token, null, you know, ooh, what does that mean? Ooh, gross. Um, it did, at least, so if I click play again, it did highlight this line. So I didn't highlight this. This was processing highlighting. It's saying that I think the error is somewhere in this line. Um, the way processing works... And this is actually a Java thing, so Java is another very popular programming language, and processing is built on top of that. Both Java and processing require that after the end of every command or every line of code, you have a semicolon. So if you don't have a semicolon, processing actually does not know that there is an and to that command. And so to, a way to think about this is for a human... We're really good. We're really good at spatial reasoning, right? So for a human, like if I say, you know, print line, I am awesome. Print line, you are awesome. that will get four exclamation marks. And then I say, you know, print line, uh, we are awesome. Right? Um, for a human, it's very easy for us to see, well, these are clearly separated by lines. They're, they're separated by space. So it's easy for me to say, hey, that's one command, this is a second command, this is the third command. It's very easy for humans to do that, right? But you got to remember, computers do not think of things like humans, not at all. Um, you know, the human brain is very complicated, right? And as, as complicated as computers have gotten, as smart as they've gotten, they're still pretty stupid compared to people. And so we need to be very exact with our grammar when talking with the computer and with processing. And so for the computer and for processing to know... When, where the end of a command is, you have to put this semicolon. This is how we say, okay, hey, everything before this, that's, that's a, a command, but this semicolon says, hey, that's at the end of the command. So once you have the semicolon here, processing says, oh, okay, this is a complete command. They're not going to type anything else for this command. And after this semicolon is going to be the start of a new command until it sees another semicolon, which means just the end of it, <clears throat> so on and so forth. And so... um. You know, if I don't have semicolons here, click play, it's going to get mad, hey, there's something wrong. You know, if I put a semicolon here, oh, still something wrong, it's because I'm missing it here and here. And so you have to have a semicolon at the end of every command. Um, now, what's kind of interesting is that it does not really care about white space. 
And so as people, we do, right? Like if I did this, you know, put a semicolon way over there and this over here, and then, you know, if I even put, but if I left it like that, let's say, that looks weird to a person. Like why do you have all this unnecessary space? Uh, processing does not care. Um, all it cares about is that it sees the semicolon, right? Um, that's how it understands. That's its grammar, right? And so, you know, if I press play here, it's actually okay with it. It runs it. There's no errors. It displays everything I told it to. And so that's actually pretty kind of neat. Um, I could even, if I wanted to, I, I, this is bad practice, by the way, but if you wanted to, I could do all this in one line. Here, let me stretch out the window so you could see the whole line. I could stretch it out, and if I click play, you see it does the same thing. Nothing has changed, even though this looks really disorganized to like a human. At least I, to me it does. Um, but processing does not care about you know lines between things. It does not care about white space. It has, does not care at all. It only cares about seeing these semicolons. You know, over here on the side, it says what line you're on. That's really helpful for us as people. Processing does not care. Um, you know, we can have everything on one line if you want to be just a total monster and <laughs> be really disorganized and just gruesome. You know, um, I don't recommend that because it is really hard for people to read. And it's really, 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 really important for you to write code that's easy for you to read, but also easy for someone else to read if they happen to look at your code, if you publish it somewhere. Um, so even though processing is okay with this, uh, I want to emphasize that I, I do not encourage you to write your code this way. I, I encourage you to kind of organize your code. Don't have a bunch of unnecessary white space just because it makes it hard for people to read. So let's do a little bit like that. So I like this format right here. I like this. There's a nice empty line between them so it's easy to read. Um, and you see it, of course, still runs. But hopefully that all makes sense. Make sure to have your semicolon. If you don't have a semicolon, uh, it will give you an error. Um, and it displays that error down here in the console as well. Oops. And so hopefully that all makes sense. Uh oh, there we go. Processing lagged on me a little bit. All righty. So let's keep on going. So to continue on with the lecture part of this video, I now want to start talking about the origin in processing. And so why do I want to talk about this? Well, processing, as you saw in the previous lesson, you can draw lots of things, right? It's a very visually based language, right? And so it's really easy to draw, you know, circles and squares and lines and text and things like that. And, you know, you can put it on the window and you can just show and display things and do cool things with that, right? Make animations, things like that. However, if you want to draw things, remember, computers are stupid. They, didn't, they can't read our mind. We have to be very explicit with what we tell it to do, right? If we don't tell it exactly what to do, it won't know what to do. It won't assume anything from us. And so we need, if you want to draw things, we need to tell it exactly where things are, right? And how big those things should be. So if I want to draw a circle at the center of my window, I need to be very exact about telling processing where to draw that circle and how big to make it. And so to be able to talk about that, we need to talk about kind of the graphical system that processing uses. Now, before doing about, talking about the system that processing uses, I'm going to just touch on and review um, a graphical system that you're probably used to. You probably saw in a math class somewhere, you know, at some point in your education, um, you've probably seen a graph like this. And that's this graph right here. And so, you know, you've probably seen this in like a math class, right, where this horizontal axis right here is the x-axis, right? Um, and this vertical one is called the y-axis. And the, what's called the origin here is usually right here in the center where the two axes kind of intersect. That's called the origin. And at that position, at the origin, x has a value of 0 and y has a value of 0. Because if this is the x-axis, um, you know, it's just at the center, x starts at 0 and y starts at 0. That being said, if I start moving to the right, let's say I move to this point, x is increasing, right? So if I move to the right, which I think is that way for you, so it's flipped for me. Um, but this way for, is right for you, x would be increasing. And so x is 1 here. If I go one more... Still going to the right, x is going to increase, x is 2, right here, x is 3, x is 4, 5, blah, 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 so on and so forth, on until forever. Now, if I go the other way, if I go to the left, x is actually going to be decreasing now. So this is going to be x is equal to negative 1. So if this is x is 0, we go to the left, x is going to go down to negative 1. Keep on going, this is going to be ne x is neg negative 2, x is negative 3, x is negative 4, boop, 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 so on and so forth, forever. Something's very similar 
happens with y, except for instead of going right and left, it's going to be up and down. So if you go up on the y-axis, y is actually increasing by 1. And remember, this is how you traditionally see um, the graphical system. We'll talk about how processing is different here in a bit. But traditionally, um, y increases as you go up, right? So y is 1. Now, if I go here, y is 2. Go here, y is 3, y is 4. So on and so forth, on until forever, right? Do, 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 do. Um, same thing, if I go down, starting at the origin, y at this position is negative 1. If I go down one more, y is negative 2. Here's y is negative 3, negative 4, boop, 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 so on and so forth, on until forever, right? Um, and this can be useful because you can place things in a very exact position by telling it what the x value of the point is and the y value of the point, right? And so if I wanted to draw a circle that was centered at the position uh, 4, 2, well, first I need to um, say where 4, 2 is. In fact, I'm going to pause the recording for just a second. All right, so I just paused the recording for just a second so I can get my whiteboard tool here. And so let's say we want to draw a point or draw a circle that's centered at the point 4, 2. And so how do we do that? Well, 4, 2, what this means is that we want to look for the point with an x value of 4. So that first number is the x. And then the y value will be the second number. So we want to find the point on this graph where x is 4 and y is 2. So let's start with x, right? So if we start at the origin, we, where we know x is 0 and y is 0, uh, if x is 4, we want, we want to go to the right. That's where x is increasing. So right here, x is 1, x is 2, 3, x is 4. Okay, so that's something to do with kind of this axis here, right? Because this is where x is 4. But now we need to look at y. So what y value do we want? We want well, y is 2. Well, if I go up, y is 1. If I go up one more, y is 2. So right here is where I, maybe I would draw my circle, or this is where I would center my circle, at the point 4, 2. So if I want to draw a circle there, I could, I'll try to be, I'll try to be exact. It's a little bit hard to draw with the mouse. Yeah, it's not the best circle by any stretch, but that's fine. That's good enough. And so you can see, it's useful to have this graphical system because I can be very exact about saying where I want my, my drawing to be, right? And so um, let's, now talk about, hopefully that makes sense, right? And so now let's talk about how processing's graphical system is a bit different. You use it in the same way, in the sense that there's an x-axis and a y-axis, and we use it to tell it where to place things, but the structure is a little bit different. And so let's talk about that next. And so if we look at the graphical system in processing, you know, before the graphical system was centered, the origin was at the center of the graph, right? For processing, and this is the case for a lot of kind of computer programs, it's not in the center of the window. It's instead on the top left corner of the window. The reason for this is because if you think about, you know, drawing something on the computer screen, well, it involves a screen, but you got to remember that for every screen out there, they're all different sizes, right? And so, you know, my laptop screen is so big, you know, whatever. Yours is probably different from mine, but it's also different from a phone. It's also different from a 4K TV or a tablet or anything like that, right? Um, so there's huge variability in terms of the sizes of screens. And so if you want it to have the origin be at the center, well, that's going to be a little bit different because for every screen because they all have different widths and different heights, right? And so one solution to this um, that just engineers and programmers have you know, can come up with is just have the origin be at the very top left of the screen. And the reason that's useful is because, you know, if we think about as we move throughout the screen, right, what's my units here, right? If I move from like this point in the screen to here, you know, what's, what's units are useful for, for moving? Like, you know, in your math class, you might have had a graph like this where you're, and you, you know, draw out a fence line for your yard or something. You know, the units of this graph may be like feet or yards or meters, something like that. But if we're thinking about computer screens, what is a useful unit? Um, and you may say, well, inches or something like that, because, you know, if I think of a phone or a laptop screen, you know, there will be so many inches big or centimeters or something like that. Um, but again, that, something like that would be weird, right? Because every screen's a different kind of amount of inches or whatever. Um, and so what we tend to use as our unit is pixels. 
And so, you know, we would have like the first pixel would be here, second pixel would be a little bit past, another pixel here. You know, these are just rows and rows of pixels. Because if you think of a computer screen, all it is is rows and rows and rows and rows of pixels. Now, if we think about that, though, in this graphical system, like that you have in your traditional math class, you have negative values, right? You can have negative x's, that's over here. You have negative y's, that's down here. Um, but for pixels, can you have a negative pixel? Uh, and the answer is, of course, no. You, know, you can't have negative 5 pixels on your screen, right? It just doesn't make sense. And so by having the origin being the top left screen, and by having this kind of setup, and we'll talk again in more detail about this in a second, but there's no negative values in your graphical system. And when you're thinking about pixels, that makes a lot of sense because you can't have ne negative pixels. So you don't want to have it possible for you to have you know, negative values in your, um, in your graphical system because we can't have negative pixels. Now let's keep talking about this graphical system and about how it's different. Um, the good news is that for the x-axis, it's pretty much the same as before in the sense that if you start at the origin, which now is at the top left corner, this is how processing works. This is how it's different from the traditional system. But if you stop, start at the top left corner, as you move to the right, x is going to increase. So we're, we're used to that, right? That's, that's pretty typical. So if I go to the right by 1, x is now 1, x is now 2, x is 3, x is 4, so on and so forth. And you know, if I start here where x is 5 and then go to the left, x is going to decrease. So x goes down to 4, goes down to 3, do, 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 do. It just cannot go past this because we, we're at the top left corner. We're at the left side of the screen. We can't go any farther, right? Um, now, that being said, y is a little bit different in the sense that now for y to increase, we, you know, before we said go up. And that's, you know, in this graphical system, that's what you do. That's what you've traditionally done. But now, if you want y to go up, you have to actually go down. So that can be a bit, you know, it can trip you up a little bit. It can be a little bit confusing because it's different from our natural intuition. Um, but it's not too bad, right? Uh, all you got to think about, if you want y to increase, you do have to go down on the screen. So if I start at the origin, which is like the top left corner of my screen, if I go down, y is actually increasing to 1. If I keep going down, y goes to 2, increases to 3, increases to 4, so on and so forth, on until forever, right? And so that's the main difference. There's two main differences between processing's graphical system and the more traditional graphical system. The two differences are the origin, instead of being in the center, is now in the top left corner. And the other major difference is that y, <clears throat> more traditionally, would go up to increase. But now in processing and in a lot of computer languages, to think about it, it actually increases as you go down on the screen. So those are the two main things to, to keep in mind. Um, also, the units uh, that we're going to be dealing with in processing is pixels. And that's because when we're dealing with screens, well, we always have pixels that we're kind of drawing on and drawing with. And so we'll do just one quick example. Um, let's say, you know, if I want to have the 0.45, I already have it drawn on here. Um, but how do we find that? Well, we know that this first one is going to be, that's the x, that first number, the second number, right there is the y and so you know what does this point mean well i need to find where x is for well x is for at zero one two three four somewhere here then let's find the y value y is five y is one here y is two y is three y is four y is five so that's why the point four five is here at this position and so you can also do practice yourself you know where's the point let's say two three Bit of ugly three, but the point two three, where would that be? Um, you know, take a moment to think about this. But x is two. Well, I can see x is two here. Y is three. Well, that is right here. So the point two three would be at this position. And again, why this is useful for us for this class and for processing is because this will allow us to be very exact about where we can draw things in our processing window. Um, and again, remember, what, the, what does this mean? The, the units for this are pixels. So we're saying, hey, move over two pixels this way and then move down three pixels that way. That's the position you want to be. So we're, we're, the resolution of this is pixels, right? We're very, very fine. We're very small. And so this allows us to be very exact, which is very useful and very, very cool. So let me just erase this real quick so it doesn't come along with us. And so now what I want to talk about 
is um, let's, let's start actually doing some code to start drawing some things in processing. And so here's a slide. Um, you can pause it, take a look at it. I'm actually going to go back to my processing, and we're going to go and start talking about how we can start drawing things here in processing. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, we'll start from blank, blank scratch here. And so if I press play, though, with no code written, let's see what happens. You see, I get this little window here. Um, Let's bring that up. Oh, you see, and this is actually another cool little note. You see, it's gone now. Oh, where'd it go? It actually just got minimized on my toolbar. But if you look at my toolbar, this window right here is is this, right? Um, and so that is my where I write my code, right? This is my IDE. But then I now have this other window that's popped up with the play button on it. This is the window where processing shows the result of your code. In this case, I don't have any code written, so there's nothing here, right? It's just a little blank window. Um, but this is where I would write my code, and this is where it would display the results. It comes up in the, as a separate window. So this is just, you know, good for you to keep in mind. So, you know, I don't have any code, and so that's thing has happened here. But this is, you know, a certain size. This is the default size of kind of the output window that processing will do. It turns out this is actually 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Um, that's just by default. I, I just happen to know that. But let's say we want to make it bigger. You know, let's say you want a, a bigger window, right? Maybe like four times bigger, let's say. How would you do that? Well, what we do is we can write a command to change the size of that window. And what's kind of useful is that the command for this is called size. And so size, and actually let me, let me back up here. To, if you want to change the size of your window, all you have to do is type out the word size. And then, the, and this is going to be the same for a lot of commands in processing. You've already even seen this with the print line. What I now need to do is have a parentheses, an open parentheses, and now I need to give it some information about what the size should be. Now, in this case, um, size needs two bits of information. One is going to be the width of my window. The other one is going to be the height of my window. And so the, what's the units that, of that going to be? You know, I'll have you think about it for a second to take a guess. Well, the units of that is going to be pixels because, you know, everything we're going to be dealing with is pixels. And so, you know, if we want it to be, you know, four times bigger than what we saw, but what we previously saw was 100 pixels by 100 pixels. That was, that was what this window was, this one right here. That's 100 pixels by 100 pixels. If we want it, let's say, four times bigger, what does this width of that need to be? Well, it needs to be 400 pixels. And so all I have to do is type in, 400. And same thing, if I want to have the height be, let's say, 400, I also just need to type in 400. Now, once I type this, I have finished out the information that I want to give to size. I now need to close my parentheses. And, you know, I still have this error here. I still have a red mark. You know, what's going on? You know, what, what am I missing here? And um, you may have already, you may be yelling it at your screen right now. You may even see this error here. I'm missing my semicolon. Remember, you have to have your semicolon. But now if I have this, and I encourage you to do this along with me, if I have this and click play, you see now my window is actually bigger, and in this case I think it is four times bigger than what it was. Um, but let's say, let's mess with this just for a second. Let's say I want it to be, you know, wider but not any taller. You know, what can I do? Well, I can just make this first number, which is the width of my size, I can just make it bigger. So let's make it like 800. Let's see what it looks like. If I do that, you see, my height did not change, but my width did. And just to even show it more, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this much bigger. 1,600 pixels. Ooh. And you see now it's definitely much wider, but it's not taller. And I also should also point out that depending on your laptop or your screen or whatever it is you're working on, um, every screen has a different amount of pixels. So if my screen has more pixels than yours, then I can make my window bigger. Um, but let's say your, your screen doesn't have as many pixels as mine, then 1,600 may actually go off the sides of your, your screen. Um, so, you know, it depends on your laptop. It doesn't really matter. I always just mess with one of the numbers until I, I get something that I like. And so, you know, just to continue on with this, if you want to make it taller, I could say, you know, make this, let's say, 1,000. Click play again. You see now it's taller. And so now I have a, a bigger drawing window. And this is actually the window that I can draw things on. So I can do circles and squares and lines. And we'll talk about that here in a second. 
And so hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to actually make mine a little bit, a little bit smaller here. Something a little bit more manageable. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's that's a decent size. It's not covering my whole screen, but it's, a, it's still pretty, plenty big. Okay, and so that's actually our first command for size or for processing the size command. And so now let's start talking about how we can draw some things in processing, starting with a line. And so I see here I have a little mark there. Get rid of that. So how do we draw a line? Well, some of you may, if you have a background in geometry or something, you may know that the definition of a line or a line segment is just two points that you just happen to connect. And so that's all you need to really define a line is these two points. And so... If we want to draw a line in processing, it actually makes use of kind of this principle of using two points. And so let's actually just talk about that for a second. In fact, I can even show you that slide because it's the next slide. Um, how do we draw a line in processing? You can pause that if you want to look at the slide. Well, what command do you think we'll use? Well, it's going to be the line command. And so to draw a line in the processing, you would type out the word line. We then have a parentheses, and then we give it some information about, um, you know, how to draw this line, right? Um, something else I want to point out before we talk about the information we give it. Notice how line and size are blue right now. If processing makes a word blue, that's processing's way of telling you that, hey, I recognize this. This is something that's built in. This is something I know how to do. And so processing is actually very nice to us in that way, in, in the sense that it tells us that it recognizes this. But like if I, if I let's say I misspelled line, you know, if I got the E, you see it's black. So this is actually processing, does not recognize what this is. It's not a built-in thing in processing. And so, you know, if, even if I put some things in here, um, I'm going to put some things. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about what do they mean in a second. But see, it, it, it throws an error. It doesn't know what that is. It says, whoa, this thing does not exist. What is it? It's because it doesn't know what lin is. It doesn't exist. But if I do line, that is something processing understands. You see the error goes away, and it makes it blue. So processing is pretty good about telling us about that. Okay, but now let's go back to, you know, we start off with the word line. Like anything in processing, any what's called a function, we'll talk about that way down, down the line, but any command in processing, we need a, the, the word, the name, then we need to open parentheses. We then need to give it some information. Just like size, we had to give it some information. Line, we also got to give it some information. But then you may be wonder, or maybe wondering, what information do we need to give it? Well, the information we need to give it is the exposition of the first point. So if we think about, go back to what a line is, you know, has it's just two points. Well, we need to give it the exposition of this first point. We also need to give it the y position of this first point. Um, so that's going to be two things we give it, the x position of the first point and the y position. So we're going to call that, let's say, x1 and y1, x, x position of the first point, y position of the first point. We also need to give it, and you may have guessed this already, the x position of the second point. So that would be like for this point and the y position of the second point. Have to excuse my awful handwriting, and so um, so these are the four bits of information we need to give to our line command so that it knows where to place our line. So four things: x, y, the first one; x, y, the second point. Okay, and so if we now go back to processing. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, you may be thinking, I don't know where to put it, and so I don't really know either. You know, let's just put it somewhere and see how it looks, right? So I'm just going to put some random numbers here. I'm going to put it maybe like a 20, 100. So that means the first point is going to be at position 20, 100, like an x value of 20, y value of 100. The next one, I'm going to have it be like further to the right and then down. And so I'm going to make it be like the next x value is going to be 100. I don't know. And the next one, if I want it down, I'm going to make it on 300. I don't know. Let's, let's see how that looks. I then close my parentheses, just like we did with size and print line. And then what else do we need? Well, of course, we need our semicolon. And I also like a little bit of spacing there, too. Um, again, that's optional. You don't have to. This is actually a perfectly reasonable way of having it. In fact, I kind of like that right now. And so, um, you know, just be consistent, right? If you have a space here, I encourage you to have a space everywhere. Whoops between uh, your comma and your number. Um, that's up to you. 
In this case, I like it a bit tight. It looks a little bit cleaner to me, but just be consistent. But if I go ahead and press play on this, you see, oh, there's my line. It's now drawn on my window. You should be able to see that. And so that's pretty cool. Let's say, though, I like where it started, but I want it to be, you know, to end kind of farther to the right over here. Let's say I want it like about right here or something like that. Um, I know what I should change is the position of my second point, which means I need to change the values of these. And so if I want it close to the end, I know my total width, based on what I told it, is 1,200. So I'll, maybe I'll make this like 1,000. And if I want it like a little bit lower, maybe I'll say like 400. Because that's, that's like halfway down, right? If I click play now, you can see, ah, it now changes my line, right? Now it's, it goes farther out. And so you can see you can actually start using this to start drawing things, right? And so, you know, let's just keep going with this. Let's draw another line. I'm going to just make it lower down, right? And so let's say I have a line that starts at position. The x value is, I'm going to say also 20. But I'm going to make it lower, like maybe like 500 low, like 500 down. And the next position is going to be, uh, I don't know, 800 for the X. And then low for the Y, like lower, or no, let's make it higher than 500. Let's make it higher than this Y value. So let's say like 450, semicolon. And again, you see here I have my spaces. Uh, that's totally fine, um, as long as you're consistent, so... Just to be consistent with what I previously wrote, I'm going to do this. You know, you, you'll kind of learn your own personal style, and you'll, you'll adjust it. So do this, and you see, ah, now I now have this second line. It's now drawn. Now, what's kind of neat about this, about us being really exact with our points, is that let's say I want to connect another line to the end of my first one. What I can do is have a line command, and... Ooh, hang on for a second. I want to keep this window up for a second so we can look at it. Um, if I want a line to another line to start at this endpoint, well, what's kind of nice about this is that I know what this point is, right? I've, I've told it what that point is. So that point, let me make this skinnier, happens to be this one right here, right? That's the x position and y position of the second point of this first line. And so what I can do is I can actually say line and then start it off at this point, which is 1,400. And then let's say I want it to like go up, like go up this way. Well, to go up this way, my x is increasing. So then I'm going to increase the x. I'm going to make it go to like 1,100, let's say. And then the y, well, if I'm going up on the window, is y increasing or decreasing? And hopefully you remember... For processing, y is actually decreasing as you go up. It's the opposite of what we usually have done in like a math class or something. And so, you know, if y is 400 and I want to go up, you know, maybe I'll make it like 100, let's say. So if I do this and click play, you'll see that now I have a line that's actually connected to that previous one I did, but it's kind of going up in that direction. So that's pretty neat. And so that's that. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's keep on going, because lines are cool and all, right? But what if we want to draw other things? We want to draw a square or a circle or an ellipse or something like that. Well, let's talk about how to do that. And it turns out there's, uh, just like there's a line command, there's also a rect command, which allows you to do a rectangle. There's also a circle command that allows you to do a circle. There's an ellipse command doing the ellipse. There's quad a command for quadrilaterals. There's a triangle command. You know, there's all these commands that are built in that allow you to draw these different shapes. Um, now, you know, I could show you how to just do all these things, and we're going to do that a little bit, but I see a little mark here. I'm going to do that for the OCD people who have been yelling at me to, to erase that mark. But, you know, I could just show you how to use all these commands, but instead I'm going to show you, you know, instead of giving you a fish, I'm going to show you how to fish, right? And so I'm going to show you how you can learn for yourself how to use these commands, and it turns out it's very, very easy. And that is going to be using the processing documentation. And so what documentation is, every programming language has it. Um, processing has very good documentation. But documentation is something that's online that you can access. And it basically will tell you everything that that programming language can do, right? So it tells you what each command is, how to use it. Um, and what's the good thing about processing is that it's, it breaks it down. It's very easy to understand, typically. So I have a link here. If you want to, if you have access to my slides, you can click on this link or you can just type this in. 
Or if you want, I can show you how you can also access it. If you just go to uh, here and say uh, processing, you can just Google processing. The first um, link is processing.org. You would go to processing.org. And then here, first off, there's our man, Dan Schiffman. He's awesome. But if you're on this page, there should be a reference button here towards the left side of the screen. If you click on reference, it takes you to the documentation page. Now, if we look at this for just a second, you see there's all kinds of functions and things to look at and read. Um, I will go ahead and say, do not feel any pressure at all that you have to memorize <laughs> all of this. Not at all. And I will go ahead and tell you that professional programmers do not remember all the functions for their languages. There's just too much. Like, it would be silly, right? That's not what programming is about. Um, and you should also never feel ashamed or feel like you're cheating or anything if you feel like you have to look up things in the documentation. That is not cheating. It's a resource made there for you and for programmers. And if you just you know ask a professional software developer or web developer or anything like that, they will say that, no, that's not cheating at all. I use documentation all the time to help guide me. And so that's what it's here for. So I encourage you to make use of it. Um, now, for today, we're just going to focus on the things within the 2D, oops, the 2D primitive section, and later on the color section. But for all the shapes, all the 2D shapes you'll draw, it's going to be found here in the 2D primitive section. Um, now I will say, let's say you didn't know that, but you want to draw a circle. If you just do like Control F, if your Windows or Command F in Mac, it brings up this little search bar where you can type in anything you want, and it will search this page for that thing. So if I want to draw a circle, but I don't, I can't find it. You know, it's just too much for me to look at. If I just search for circle, you see it actually highlights it for me, and it, it can kind of help you find uh, what you're looking for. So that being said, since we're here, uh, let's say we want to draw a circle. I'm going to click on circle. And uh, what's nice about this is it actually will give you example code. So this right here, this example, this is actual processing code that you can copy and paste, you can play with it, you can try it out, and um, it will actually will draw a circle. It also describes how this works, and it tells you, you know, more information about it. But for now, you know, we'll talk about that here in a second, but for now, let's just go ahead. Let's take this line of code. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go down to processing. I'm going to delete my lines here because we're done with the lines for now. And I'm going to just paste my line of code. So now that I have this circle um, code pasted here, let's just see what happens. Like if I stop and I click play, you see it draws a circle. Hey, that's pretty cool, right? So here it is. We've got a circle. But, you know... You may be wondering, what the heck do these numbers mean? What, <laughs> what, what, are, what are these? Like, what, how did that result in this, right? And so to understand that, let's go back to the documentation here. And let's kind of look at it in more detail now. And so if we just read the description, it says, it draws a circle on the screen. Okay, cool, we've seen that. By default, the first two parameters, now when it says parameters, what the parameters are is this bits of information in the parentheses. So before, if I back it up where I had my lines, anything kind of in between these parentheses, these are the parameters. Same thing for the size, that was the parameter, these two numbers. And so when it says parameters, it's talking about the things that you give it in the parentheses. So it says, by default, the first two parameters set the location of the circle. Okay, so that's saying that these first two things set the location. Okay, we'll, we'll look more at that and see why. You probably have an idea why already, but we'll, we'll look at that in more detail in a second. And then it says the third parameter sets the shape's width and height. So that means this third number sets kind of the size. In other words, it sets the diameter of the circle. And so if we look at, you see parameters has a parameter section. I, I, this is the most helpful section to me usually. Um, it tells us exactly what these three parameters are. So the first parameter is x. And so that is the x coordinate of the, the ellipse. This, this is the position, like the x position of the circle. In this case, it's talking about the exposition of the center of the circle. Y is going to be the Y coordinate of the center of the circle. Extent says width or height of the circle, which in other words, for a circle, would just be the diameter. So what that means, if we go back to this, that means this is the X position, this is the Y position, and then this is the diameter of the circle. So let's just play with that. Let's see if that makes sense. So if we're here, let's say I want to move the circle more to the right. 
That should mean I'd have to change what? Well, it should be this first number, right? So if I change the first number, which is the x value, uh, let's say I make it like 250. Now, let's make, let's make it pretty drastic. Let's say like 500. I press play now. You see, boom, it moved to the right. So I've now changed my x position from what it was to 500. Same thing if I want to move it kind of down. I need to change the y value, which is the second number. Now, do I want to increase it or decrease it if I want to go down? Well, if I want to go down, I should increase it. And so let's say, let's make that like, I don't know, 400. Click play. Let's see what that does. Uh, comes on down. Good to go. And then let's say I want to make it bigger. Well, that should be this third number. That's the diameter. So let's make it a, let's make it a big chungus, right? Let's make it like, a, like 250, right? A, little, a big circle. I press play. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Got a nice little a big boy right there. And so, um, you know, so that, it's changing these parameters, the values of these numbers allow you to very tightly control what you're displaying on the screen. And of course, you can draw many circles. You know, if I, if I copy this line of code, do this, change the position a little bit, you know, make it tiny or something. Do that, you see, boom, now I have another circle, and I can make it, I can make it real small. So let's make it itty bitty, little tiny circle. Boop. I don't know if you can see that, but a little tiny circle there. Um, I made it small because I changed this third argument. And I, I made it five. Now again, what what's units of this, right? What units of this? If I say the diameter is five, what is that? Well, that's five pixels. So that's what five pixels look, look like. It's it's pretty small. Um, this is what two hundred fifty pixels look like in terms of diameter. So kind of cool. Um, now all that being said, this is mainly what I want to cover in terms of drawing things in processing. Um, you know, you may want to draw a triangle. You may want to draw a rectangle. And so what's nice is that you can do that by just looking at these different functions here. This shows you how to draw a rectangle, a square, a triangle, a point, line, ellipse, a quadrilateral. And so what I encourage you to do is that go ahead and start your kind of your challenge for this video. Um, there's going to be an addition to this once we go over color, but go ahead and start this by um, drawing something. You know, it can be anything. It can be just abstract lines and shapes and stuff everywhere. You know. I don't really care. Um, or you can actually try to draw a thing. Draw, you know, a car, a house, a tree, you know, whatever you want to draw. Um, try and make something. Uh, I encourage you for this challenge is have at least five lines or shapes. Uh, you can have more, of course, if you want. But have at least three different shapes. You know, don't have five circles or five squares or something like that. Try to have some variety in your, in your design. Have at least three different kinds of shapes. And then uh, have at least five total shapes or lines. And, uh, you know, if you want to draw a square, look at the documentation. Uh, copy the code, paste it, mess with it, and uh, see if you can get it to work. And so that's that. Um, I will then uh, see you in the next video where we will talk about adding color to your drawings. Thank you very much.